I hope you noticed what happened with these two examples, the example that I did and the example that you did. In the example that I did, I ended up figuring out that the limit as x goes to 4 is 79. And if I call g of x that 5x squared plus 2x minus 9, it turns out if you would have plugged in 4, you would have gotten 79. In fact, as you saw this, 5x squared plus 2x minus 9, essentially when we use those limit properties, we got down to 5 times 4 squared plus 2 times 4 minus 9. So we see that this led to the same thing as me just plugging in 4 into this uh, function or into this algebraic expression. Well, that also happened with the rational function we dealt with in the you do problem. We started out with this uh, fraction 3x plus 4 over 5x squared. We took the limit of that as x goes to negative 2. And basically, we saw that through limit properties, we could have simply plugged in the negative 2 everywhere I see an x in order to get my answer. So in terms of the limits of these polynomial and rational functions, the two examples that I looked at worked out really nicely where I could have simply just plugged in a number into a function and got the same answer as taking the limit as x goes to that number. It turns out this is a more general rule. It turns out if our functions are polynomials, if our p of x and q of x are polynomials, and c is a real number, then if you take the limit of a polynomial as x approaches c, you can simply plug in the number c into the polynomial in order to find the limit. Now, if you have a rational function, remember a rational function is just a, a polynomial divided by another polynomial. It turns out you can do the same thing except when the denominator is zero. If that denominator becomes zero, then we have to do some other work. So with polynomials and rational functions, where I don't have denominators of zero, the limits work really nicely. I can simply plug in the number into the function itself in order to find the limit as x goes to that number. So that's going to cut down our work pretty drastically. So for instance, Let's take this function, f of x equals the rational function, 2x to the third minus 5x squared plus 3, all divided by x minus 5. And I want to find the limit of that function as x goes to 7. So what I do, I have my function here, take the limit as x goes to 7 of that function, I need to check and make sure that when you plug in 7, you don't get 0 in the denominator. I don't in this case. In fact, when I plug in 7 into the denominator, I'm going to get a 2. So that's good. And if I'm not getting 0 in the denominator, then I can just simply plug in 7 in for each x. and then evaluate that. So the limit as x goes to 7 of f of x 
is the fraction 2 7 to the third minus 5 7 squared plus 3, all divided by 7 minus 5. And if we want to um, simplify that, again, the denominator is going to be 2. The numerator is going to be a pretty big number. Yeah, 444, okay, is what I got. Hopefully I typed that into my calculator correctly, but it is just a matter of typing that into your calculator. So I got a limit of 222 for this limit as X goes to seven. So if I were to write that properly, what I would write is limit of f of x as x goes to 7 is 222. So that's how we can use those rules of limits analytically to really shorten up how much work I have to do when finding limits of polynomial functions and finding limits of rational functions whose denominator is not zero.